Taft, I am back again with another tag. This one was started by Deborah Vaughan. I think his sister chick. Um, this is the You Might Be a Nail Polish Fanatic If. There are 15 questions um, and then there's like an add-on question to it. Um, and apparently if you score more than 10 out of 15, um, then you're a certified nail polish fanatic. I don't think I actually do score that high. I think I'm more the, uh, you're flirting with disaster run the other way, like 6 to 10. Um, only because uh, I don't travel. <laughs> so, anyway, we'll get into the questions. We'll get to that at the end. Uh, so, the first one is, if you've ever stopped driving because the sun just caught the sparkle of your holographic polish, um, I haven't actually, I don't drive, so I don't have to do that, but I have uh, taken photos of my nails in the car because, like, particularly, like, with a hollow, they were just looking so incredible. Uh, I did that once with a, uh, Andrew Kiss now, like a polish. Uh, so the question is, what is your all-time favourite hollow? My all-time favourite hollow is probably also my first hollow, um, and I have loved this ever since I got it. This is Layla's uh, Coral Glam from their Hologram Effect line. This thing is seriously a gorgeous... I can find a picture of it on the nails. I'll insert it. But that is my all-time favourite holographic polish. Number two. You know the following terms. Hollow, squoval, three-free and blurple. Well, yeah, of course. <laughs> so the question is, what are your favourite blurple polishes? Um, I have lots of favourite purple polishes because purple is one of my favourite colours um, and a blue toned, toned purple is my preference over a pink toned purple um, so or a red toned purple um, so yeah I just pulled two of them out um, Rimmel's Blue My Mind is a purple um, this is the cream purple and Crabtree and Evelyn's Cobalt, which is a shimmery blurple. So those are two of my favourite blurples. Number three. You plan your vacation based on brands available there. I don't vacation. <laughs> Uh, but if I did, I probably would be doing something like that. Um, what countries do you own or want to own polishes from? Um, I own polishes from um, Australia, America and England, I believe. I would like to own a lot more English kind of polishes um, and a lot more indies from everywhere. Um, I, 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 I just love polish from anywhere, so I don't really worry about what country it comes from, as long as it's nice. Uh, number four. You've slept in the parking lot of Sally Beauty because the 75% off clearance sale starts tomorrow. Uh, no. No, I haven't done that, but I have planned, um, uh, to go shopping because I know that one of the stores that I shop at is having a sale. Uh, Oh, honey, we just need to go in here for a minute. Um, so where do you go for the best nail polish deals? Uh, generally speaking, I go to Oddsale, which is an online store which allows you to buy um, a lot of stuff that comes from, like, particularly America, sometimes from England, at a much reduced price from what you'd actually have to buy, pay if you bought them directly from those companies um, and the other one is Cosmetic Capital which sells uh, really reduced price nail polish um, a lot cheaper than you can buy in store generally in Australia in store nail polish is super duper expensive um, so unless you can get it on sale you don't kind of thing um, and also Ultra 3 online 
which is not the same as Ultra in America. It's a nail polish brand in Australia, um, a makeup brand in Australia. It looks like this. Um, buying them direct from their site is cheaper than buying them in store. Um, they're three ninety five, I think, in store, but you can get them for like a dollar seventy nine online, which in Australia is like super duper cheap for uh, a nail polish of this quality. Uh, number five, you don't like the colour pink, but still own fifty bottles of it. Uh, yeah. Um, have you ever purchased a polish colour finish? You had no idea why once you got it home. Uh, yeah, for me it's not the colour pink. It's this colour. I seem to have an extraordinary number of polishes in this colour, which I really don't like. Uh, this one is Sally Hansen's Grige, which is what colour this is, or greige. This is what colour this is. Um, and this one is Dance Till Fawn by Sephora by OPI. Um, really, I only got this one because it was in a pack with a couple of other pretty looking nail polishes. Um, but yeah, uh, I kind of wonder why I buy these polishes because it's, it's. Yeah. That's how you know you're addicted. Number six, you've set an alarm to notify you 15 minutes before the next indie sale goes live. Um, I probably would if I bought indie polish more regularly. The indie polish tends to be priced a little bit outside of my budget most of the time. So I haven't really done that. Um, which is your favourite indie brand and why? Um, I actually own two indie brands. Well, there was three, but the... The, the third one, it's like a couple of little tiny sample bottles, which I'm nearly finished with. Um, and unfortunately, one of the two brands that I own is no longer in production, even though I love it to death. Uh, which makes me not want to use the nail polish, if you know what I mean. Um, so that would be Angel Kiss Nail Lacquer, which is an Australian indie, or was an Australian indie. This polish happens to be Come to the Well, which is a blue holographic which is like really, really gorgeous. Um, and the only other indie brand that I own is Picture Polish, which is also Australian. Um, this one happens to be hollow on top. I think I have five polishes from Picture Polish. Um, yeah, so they're really the only two indie brands that I've actually had any experience with. Um, yeah, so I can't really say what my favourite is. I'd like to own a lot more, but yeah. Uh, number seven, you spent more on a it's more money on a bottle of polish than lunch. Yeah. Um, what is the most expensive nail polish you've ever purchased, and why? This is actually going to be really weird because it's a mainstream polish and it's uh, not that expensive in America. It's just it's really expensive in Australia. And that would be this bottle here of Revlon's Pink Glaze. I paid $15.95, I think, for this, which is more than I paid for any of my in my indies that I have. Um, pretty much more than I've ever paid for a bottle of nail polish. I almost always buy on sale, or I buy cheaper brands. In Australia, Revlon's stupid expensive. I bought this because it was the only one that I wanted out of all of those transforming effects lines that I didn't have already and I, every time I went to go buy it it wasn't there, like when they had a sale on there would not be a bottle of this there there would be everything else but this one um, I didn't want nude graffiti I do actually own it now but I got it on sale like really cheap on sale but this one was never there when they were having a sale and one day I was in Priceline in the city and I had a bottle of it and I think it had actually been opened because I didn't use all that polish. It was almost down there when I bought it. But I literally was so desperate to get this colour that I paid full tote odds for it. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, okay, so... Number eight. You started a YouTube IG channel so that you could converse with others in nail speak. <laughs> uh, not necessarily why I started my YouTube, but pretty much why I started 
my card ran out of space, so I had to delete some things. Um, yeah, um, Instagram was pretty much, I started that to show off nail stuff and get with nail people. If you're wondering what that noise is, that is the dog climbing on the window. Get down. Yeah. <laughs> okay, number nine. You are on first name basis with every drugstore sales clerk within a 20 mile radius of your home. Uh, I'm on first name basis with a lot of stores because I live in a little tiny town. Um, or even if I'm not on first name basis, like they know who I am. Kind of thing. But I live in a really small town, so... Um, what brand has your favourite bottle shape and which has your least favourite bottle shape? Okay, so least favourite bottle shape. They look really cool and all, but this is Nika K. I don't know if she still uses this shape or not, but it's just, it's really awkward to store. They're quite big on the base. Um, yeah, it's just a really awkward shape. And the height of it is, they're so much taller than even... Um, the Revlon ones that it makes it kind of difficult to um, like if you want to stack something on top of it because that's how mine are stored um, yeah it just doesn't really work um, <laughs> I don't like the shape of those but the ones I do like the shape of are ones that are square like this kind of shape so this is the old Rimmel um, Salon Lasting Finish Pro, sorry. Um, that's that one. They're quite a tall but uniform shape, which I really, really like. Um, BYS, which is an Australian nail polish, comes in these nice square. that They fit really nicely together when you're, like, storing them. And the L'Oreal, these L'Oreal ones, although L'Oreal have now changed their bottle shape slightly. Um, I just like the nice, smooth, square-shaped bottles that all fit nicely together. So that is those. Um, in case you're wondering what colours these are, <laughs> Sunset Orange from Rimmel, um, La Orange from uh, L'Oreal, and Clowning Around from BYS. Um, the only reason they're all orange is because I just yanked them out of my orange section. Um, <clears throat> You know the difference between cyan, cerulean, and Prussian blue. What is the most unusual colour or finish that you own? <sighs> I don't think any of them are particularly unusual colours. Sometimes they're unusual colour combinations, like pineapples have peelings too, is a kind of strange colour combination. But in terms of finish, I think probably one of the most unusual ones that I own, and one that I really actually like, is the China Glaze, uh, yeah, China Glaze Crinkled Chromes. They're kind of, um, like, they have that chromey finish, but they have, like, bar glitters and um, little specky bits in them so that when it dries, it's all kind of, like, crinkly looking. I actually really like it. I think it's a really cool finish. I know not everybody likes it, but it is one of the more unusual finishes that I have. Um, and, you know, anything that's kind of textured is up my alley, so... Um, number 11. You think the colour of the neighbour's new car would make a great polish? Uh, yeah, I've done that. Uh, especially when I see there's these cars sometimes I drive around, they're like oil slick cars. They're kind of like purple and then as they move they end up like green. I'm always thinking that would be a really nice nail polish. But th th I have actually made that comment a few times to people. I'd be like walking around and I'd be like, oh bit interesting in a bottle. <laughs> um, the question for this one is ugly pretty colours, yes or no? I'm a little on the fence on this one. I don't think any colour is particularly ugly ugly. Some of them I just don't particularly like, like this. Still own them, don't particularly like them. Um, but sometimes colours just are strange and I wonder why anybody made them. Um, I'm not sure I really like ugly pretty colours. Like, I was not very happy when this arrived in one of my beauty subscription boxes. Um, it's called Strange Beautiful. It's actually two bottles of polish. Um, at that particular point in time, I kind of looked at them and thought they're just really gross. Like, particularly this one. 
um, they're kind of grown on me a little bit over time, so I guess I do kind of like ugly pretty colours. They kind of grow on me. Number 12, you've moved to a bigger house so that there's room for your collection. Um, uh, no, but I have moved stuff around in the house in order to store my growing collection. Um, uh, we live in a pretty big house to start with, uh, and I don't get as much space as I'd like uh, sometimes. Uh, if I could, I'd take over a whole room and just have them all over the walls, because at the moment you can't really see them. Uh, basically, it's mostly... Whoops. I mostly have them stored in containers like this. I have some other ones that are a bit deeper that work better. Um, but because I have limited space and lots and lots of polish, they tend to be... If I have more than one container worth, of um, polish they tend to end up being stacked on top of one another. I have a set of cupboards like right here that are just like a bookcase type cupboard like little square cubicle type things. Um, so I can pull the trays out and actually look at what's in them. I'd rather them all kind of be on a wall somewhere but you've got to be really careful when you do that that they're not in direct sunlight. Where they are here the window is like right there and there's another window right right there the window there so where they are right here they don't get direct sunlight on them ever which is why I have them in that particular location it's also why I tend to prefer to store them in containers rather than on the wall um, if I had a room where I could do it without them being in direct sunlight I probably would but I don't um, but at least this way they're not in direct sunlight and they're not going to bleach out which is one of the risks um, and as for organization of them they used to be organised by brand, but now they've been organised by colour. So I have all of like my purples together, um, all my oranges together, all my yellows together, um, greens, blues, pinks, reds. Um, all of my like really glittery polishes are together, and then um, all the blacks and whites are together. And then there's a section for neutrals which needs more sorting out but hasn't been sorted out so like golds browns silvers greys are all kind of like clumped together um, probably because neutrals are like my least preferred area of nail polish even though i own a shit ton of it uh number 13 you've planned a shopping trip with your girlfriends just so you can make sure you visit tk max ultra right aid in that town um, I tend to, like if I have to go to the city, I will make sure that I uh, hit up Target in their discount section and um, uh, Chemist Warehouse in the city. I used to go hit up Priceline, but I don't need to anymore because we have a Priceline here. Um, but we've just got a Daiso. I'm interested to see whether they end up with any interesting nail polishes in Daiso. Um, but yeah, I do tend to, uh, if I'm going out of town, I will be interested to see whether I see anything, but I don't usually go out of town, except like to the capital city of the state that I live in. Um, so I don't really have, the question for this one is, what is your favourite out of town purchase? I don't actually have one, because most of my polish is either bought online, or it's bought in the city, and I buy a lot in the city, so there's no favourite one. Uh, number 14, you've sent nail mail. Um, no. No, I haven't actually. I don't think I have sent nail mail. Mainly because the mail service in Australia is a little bit funny, like uh, Royal Mail, where they're a bit funny about sending stuff. Um, I think one of the people who won one of my giveaways got some nail polish, but I think they were, I think they were in America somewhere. So I think, but it wasn't like specified nail mail between like nail junkies type thing. So, um, so the question as to where's the furthest you've sent to polish to, I think it was somewhere in America. Pretty sure that was in one of my giveaways. Um, yeah. Don't really send nail polish very much. I don't actually know too many people who either want Australian polish or, um, I don't have too many friends to send it to either in Australia. So, 
Number 15. You've named a pet Zoya or Essie. I uh, wouldn't name my pet either of those two things because they're not my favourite brands. But uh, I, I, I probably would have thought about it. <laughs> I probably would have thought about it with our current dog if uh, I thought I could get away with it, which I probably couldn't. Um, so what is your favourite mainstream nail polish brand? Actually, I have two. They're both Australian. Um, good price, good quality. Uh, the first one is BYS, which is about $4 a bottle if you buy it from Kmart. Um, $4.95, $5 if you buy it from the chemist. Would not recommend. Uh, this one is black satin. It's like down here. This is like my favorite one coat black nail polish. I actually have another bottle of this. I like it so much. And the other one is Ulta 3, which you've heard me talk about. Um, this happens to be Lily White, which is like all the way down here. This was my go-to wipe for a while. I still come back to it occasionally. It's still re it didn't break a second. Uh, it still requires two goats, but um, yeah. But they would actually be my favorite mainstream brands. They're cheap, um, well, affordable would be a better way of putting it. And they're good quality. They work really, really, really well. So yeah. Um, so I would say I'm probably in the middle. I'm not quite a nail fanatic. Um, mainly because of budget constraints has stopped me from being a full-blown nail fanatic. Um, but I do love nails and everything to do with nails. So um, Yeah, so that is the You Might Be a Nail Fanatic tag if. Um, if you want to do this tag, if you think you might be a nail fanatic, then do that. I will leave all the questions down below. Uh, don't forget to go and check out Deborah Vaughan and also Claire, who is who I saw it on as well. Uh, yeah, if you want to subscribe, click down there, leave me a thumbs up. If you like tag type videos, and leave me a comment down below. I try to respond to all comments, and I'll see you on my next video. See ya.